And we're recording. Welcome to the DQQ Lifestyle Podcast with me, Marcus. Hey, yo, there, buddies. Oh, mash up with hay fever, me. Mash up. That's why there's been no trailers leading up for this one because I thought I'll get over it. I'll get used to it. No, it's absolutely sweltering in here as well. Can't open window because there'll be all kinds of background noise. Yo. Oh. Product placement sponsored by Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, you know what I mean? But yeah, where am I? I must have recorded this earlier in the week still, but I didn't like it, so I'm doing it again. Oh, mashup, fully mashup. You mind mashup or what? Because this year seems to be just on a new level, on a hay fever thing. Yeah, so anyway, England won yesterday 4 0. I forgot what they played, I didn't watch it. I'd have seen it on the um, let's Google this morning. Because I was at work last night and uh, just got me thinking about this guy when I was in prison, yeah? And uh, he was a Yorkshire lad, not from my part of Yorkshire. I'm from South, he's from West. And uh, I stick me head in, stick me head in, stick me head in in his cell as I'm walking past. Because I was at the very end still and I'm walking towards that, probably get some water or something. And I'm walking back past and I've just stuck me head in. And I've gone, uh, you're right there, buddy. He's gone, who's that us? <laughs> he used to call me us because he's pre the situation that man's dealing with, you know what I mean? Us is us. So you put the, you get it. He's gone, who's that us? I've gone, aye. You know what I mean? I was watching football. He goes, what? I'm not watching bunch of dosses kick back air back. <laughs> Yo, listen. Man, I mash up, man. Mash up round there. So today's episode is about poor conflict resolution. Right, so where I got the main bit of this work from is from the Breville guy. Big up the Breville guy, you know what I mean? Because obviously me and him are cool from that. Like, it was just work to look at. It was a bit awkward at first because obviously I've took it somewhere. He didn't mean to kind of really take it there, but he did. And he, he kind of knew and he kind of didn't. He like half knew, half didn't, half in a mad thing himself, half his sentences, much needs to do, bare halves. You get the, you know the maths anyway, the hood maths. And, uh, yeah, but worked on it. And obviously that was like early in my thing, innit? And we was cool. I was there for two and a half years. That was probably like a couple of months in. And I was blessed from the, <coughs> for the rest of the sentence. Um, so hold tight him. Hopefully he's doing well. Oh, guess who else I've heard about? The super bad man or whatever I called him. The man who rubbed my stick. And it sounds dire, like, just I was saying about how life plays out. Like, I'm not even going to badmind him still, because it's not even about that. Because what he did and what he's doing now, sorry, just wiping my, my moustache. My moustache has sweat around there and I twit it, I twit. Anyway, so, I mean, even he's, he's, well, he's still in prison. Bear in mind, he would have had a parole uh, every year, 18 months or two years. This incident I'm talking about was 217-ish. 216 it might have been actually so we're talking what what's that four seven years ago like nearly seven years ago yeah so he done 10 years and it's been in 17 years now yeah my man's just he's progressed though through the jail system so he's in the last stretch now i think he had a mazzolini he had to get the fucking mp involved to get him shift because he, he could have he should have been moved to the cat d but he didn't so he had to get the uh so what you do you contact your local mp and they put the gears in motion to apply pressure to the criminal criminal justice system to get you moved um, that's just what some people have to do. <clears throat> I know, as I told you, he's on a mad one, so that's probably why they, they, they messed about him. Because he was probably messing about in there, so he's just used some other avenues and channels to get that process in motion because he'd been granted it. So he, that's what he'd been given. So that's what he deserved to move on, progress. And it seems he's just burning the thing. You know, these ones there, the the Krisnak, the Krinak, and uh, like yeah, so. He's not looking good. He's just mashed up. He's been in there X amount of time. He could have like probably at least, he's had at least three paroles since then for release. He's at about, he could have had a maximum of like seven since then. And uh, it's still there. So like I say, it's not even a bad mind thing. Laughing at a man's downfall, like, but what I was saying about how you are in life is what comes back at you. So you can call it karma, but I don't really, it's not really a karma thing for me. But, I realised that a lot of the bad things that are happening to me is because I'm doing bad things. So yeah, like you say, you can call it karma, but it's it's I'm 
putting the gears in motion for set things, do you know what I mean? And he's putting the gears in motion for set things. So obviously if he's fucking about, then he's not going to get out because it's his behaviour that's keeping him inside because he's getting caught for drugs, caught for phones, caught for fighting, caught for da 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 So that's all on him. No, it's only until he does something different. Um, and another thing as well, talking to someone yes, yesterday, uh, bad boy conversation, just a pure sharing, link up, relatable thing, man's on a similar wave, his like change journey cost him, cost him, took him nine months and he's been strong within his thing for like four years, he says, no relapses, no no. And the way he's talking, I apologise for all this sniffling. I mean, I've got hair fever, man. I have for a long time. I have forever. All my life, I know I've had a, a hair fever. But this year is mad. Mad. So, man's on the fix of Fenadine. Uh, Olivia can buy it from the, from the shops, but it's only 120s. I need the 180s. But the last time I went to the doctors, they're saying there's a Europe-wide uh, shortage, which was mad because literally like the same week, I'd trying to get creatine. This was, t- this was like a year ago <laughs> or nearly a year ago. Trying to tell me, oh, no creatine in Europe. And then creatine's popped back out and it's mad pricey and that, like, you know, anyway. Yeah, so chatting to him, it was bad. Like, it was sick. I'm buzzing off that conversation. And like I'm, I would have saying to him, like, I'm always on my journey forward. But hearing things like that just pushes me forward a little bit more. And he had that, like, don't quit, uh, no quit mentality. That don't quit, never quit, should I say. So, yeah, it was sweet. It was sweet still. Like, love it inspirational inspirational but yeah photo conflict resolution <laughs> breville guy making me realize that how i re- behaved in that situation wasn't conducive to something positive and moving on <laughs> and it comes down to where this is gonna be a mad episode again the sniffling thing <coughs> <coughs> but you know your boy keeps it real I don't do no fancy editing and this and that. I keep it all in because it's just real, in it? We're just keeping it 100 around here as much as we can. I've had a few nose blows. Yeah, I've had a few nose blows that are definitely not staying in. <laughs> I might miss some because I just do the quick editing thing, but you know, it's 100% real. Yeah, so, poor conflict with that guy, with the Breville guy. Okay, going into the groups, what was that about? He mentioned something, then he wanted to know how I was feeling. At the time, I didn't know how I was feeling, so... <coughs> because they mentioned a certain name and I'm thinking can touch get people touched on road. I've got this fear there. Within the moment, because I'm helpless in prison, obviously there's helplessness there. I'm feeling vulnerable. Like because I can't do no about it if someone is trying to do something to someone I know out there that can't look after themselves, kind of thing. So there's a few things uh, on like in it, and it's like, what's this about? Like with the poor conflict resolution, why can't you just use your words? Because what they started to like get through to me is if you can't use your words and you're just being violent or acting out, then what you're doing is throwing a tantrum. A, a toddler kicks off and throws a tantrum because they can't use their words. When the child grows up a little bit more, they start to use the words more and ex- ask questions and explain things. And but So I'm thinking to myself, wow, so all them times I've like kicked off in that, yeah? Man weren't a bad man. <laughs> I thought I was a gangster. You know what I mean? Like, you're trying to tell me that I'm just... A toddler, like I'm just kicking up like a bit, and I thought, you know what? I believe that because I couldn't use words, I couldn't speak in conflict. I couldn't speak. It was either beef or no beef. Like just forget it. Like there's nothing at all happening, or there's no conflict rising, and we're arguing. Like that's why I always rate my bridging. A couple of my bridging still, they can be like face to face with a man just arguing to death. To, 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 to. I've never been able to do that. Me, never at that time. Like I had to. It was only action. Could only ever be action. <clears throat> But then it got me thinking, obviously we're talking back to the household. You know how we were going, mommy, cover your ears. <laughs> also, big up my mum. You know. Uh, yeah, so just a little sidebar, as I always do. You know what I mean? This isn't anything that I say about my parents and that. It's just explaining a situation that's happened that's kind of left an imprint on me and I haven't been able to process it, which has kept, kept like an emotional blockage where I've then had certain behaviours when that thing arises in the future or the present, should I say. Went to the TC, the therapeutic community, was able to process this, remove that emotional blockage and move on 
and develop new skills and new ways of dealing with things because the old reaction wasn't working, so I've created new responses. <coughs> so like I'm not getting onto them, not trying to make them look bad, nothing like that. Just is where it is. Like I said, they weren't trying to be bad. They're just reacting from their trauma, from lack of understanding. That's all it is. And they, their parents, same, lack of understanding, their own trauma, and boom, 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 boom. So it's all generation, it's all breaking it. You know, it's creating, we need to break the cycle of like, you know, I'm possibly thinking most of us that are watching this, uh, this is just a guess. Working class, you know, the ones there, working class. We're broke, and we're destined to be poor because we've got a poor mentality. Do you know what I mean? We don't know about wealth, we know about riches, so we want money and not assets. We think cash is a thing, but cash is a depreciating asset. <clears throat> so when we're on road, busing, trap, you know, jacking, it's just all for cash. That's just a depreciating asset. What you could get for a pound when I was a kid is no compared to what, like, yo, these kids are looking for fivers and that. I remember being happy with 50p. No, like four, five, seven, even eight, you know, 50p pound, two pound. These kids are wanting at least a fiver and they think it's no. I can't believe it. I says. Anyway. So yeah, it's breaking that and creating generational wealth. And also with the mad parenting, it's gaining our own understanding of self vainly, first things first, and then what to do with them. Because it's not just knowing what to do. Because when we can't handle ourselves and we're reacting, that stuff that we've learned to parent goes out the window because it's like, ah, oh, what you want? Ah, oh, just shut up. Just go and play. Just go into your room. When that's the reaction, we need to be responsive and not reactive. <laughs> Fuck you. Know. Anyway, so yeah. Back to the household. Hey, yo, mummy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, reactive household. People becoming frustrated and showing it, verbalizing it. Do you know what I mean? Um, whether it's with yourself or with someone else, you've seen it all day long. So yeah, there is no like, there was never no. I was speaking to someone recently actually about um, that sort of stuff, like just blowing things out of proportion. Like, oh, TV's broke now. Nah. Let's buy a new one. It was different, but it's different now. We can buy new ones, but back then money was tight, tight up. And uh, so that's might be a bit of an extreme one. But now, you know, it's just like, we'll buy a new one. We've got, the money's there, like, we'll just get a new one. Like, there is no, like, big, oh, the only thing is like, oh, we can't watch it now, but we can just watch our phones for, for the meantime or whatever. Not just more TVs in the house anyway, but there's everything just get blown out of proportion. Oh, well, that's broke now. What are we going to do? Oh, lost that. Have you lost that now? Oh, it's like, they were just making, so that's just focusing on the problem. So it's like, so the, the new, my, my mindset now, because I was the same. I'd be like that, oh, you, you fucking, what the fuck, man? Do you know what I mean? Argue with a person and blame and this and that, blah, blah, blah. It's just creating more friction and more, it's just spreading out this ripple effect of negativity and just wrong focus. So it's just focusing on the problem there. That's been problem-centered um, rather than being solution-based. Um, uh, so yeah, so it's instead of just thinking like, oh, TV's broke, I'll just get online and order a new one coming in two working days or something boom that's settled we don't need to think about that no more oh you've lost that oh where is it we can have a look if it's not there we'll get you a new one do you know what I mean or like if it's something if it's a child they might need consoling because you know no matter what you lose whether it's your keys or a family member you go through grief like Jimmy's you know like what's happened can't believe it you're looking around you're trying to like you know what I mean it's like five there's like a five stage model let's google it grief the stages of grief I think it's a five stage model and a seven stage model so it's the different stages of grief I mean, I think they both end in like acceptance or the five stage model might end in acceptance. You know what I mean? So you're at peace with what's happened. But some people never find that peace. They're still grieving <coughs> 10, 20, 30, 50 years after someone's passed because they haven't. And it's like an active process. You have to kind of be, because some people want to wallow as well. But I'm going on another one. This is poor conflict resolution. Resolution. So... Yeah, just never learn to find a resolution. A resolution is like getting to a point, finding a point, like getting to an end, like ending it. Collapse. You know what I mean? Just collapsing the thing. <coughs> so, learn to use my words. I remember one time I had to challenge this guy. Couldn't do it. Couldn't, like, challenging this guy over this stuff. I'm getting bad dad transference, yeah? Couldn't do it. 
come around like looking at me like, yo, I'm trying to like, I don't like the way you do that thing. Oh my gosh, it was so hard. It was so hard to get those words out. Oh, fucking hair fever, man. It's frustrating me to death. Right, that's it. Another tissue's coming out. So hard to get that challenge out. But then after I found that voice and was able to say, because obviously nothing happened, because I've always been scared to say something because there was always a consequence. Like, so that's what, it was the fear. Once again, feelings just di dictating our whole life was holding me back. Obviously, we're trying to keep me safe. Um, actually, that's what I meant to add on about the, the super gangster guy. Obviously, so what he did, what he's doing now, so it's not about like belittling him and getting onto him and like, you know, like being happy for his downfall or whatever, or his, him not being too successful in life at the moment. Is he's just doing what he needs to do to survive. Even when he took that thing off me, yeah, that was to buy drugs. And that's that. That's, you needed to do what he needed to do to survive. And that's what triggered my response, my survival response. In his was drug survival. Mine was pride, reputation survival. Like, didn't want to be left to the vultures. But letting that simmer and seeing that nothing happened, nothing changed. And might, there might be little whispers in the corners and that and certain like groups of men like just taking the piss or whatever. But with my ones, it was like, cool, just let it go. It's nothing. Because it is nothing. But obviously, you know, it's like for us, man, it's like, yo, it's peak. It's fully taking the piss. Principal. Like, what? And obviously, the feelings kick in of like, you know, I've been took for a dickhead and that. And, you know, it's vulnerability, really. That's took for a dickhead thing. So if a man's saying, taking me for a dickhead, like, he's talking about you've made him vulnerable. So if you hear that from the man, them, from yourself, vulnerable. And that's calm. That's where the strength is. Strength in vulnerability. Like, that's why a lot of us don't blossom. It's like a little plant. Remember in school, when you used to make us like grow plants, you put a, right, you'll put that plant on windowsill and we'll put that plant in cupboard and then cupboard plant, mash up, mash up, little thing, little man. You know what I mean? The window plant, boom, 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 watch him now. He might go trunk around there, isn't it? You know it's true. And that's what I'm saying. So the, getting the nutrients and the support. So that's basically me. Be, not being able to get vulnerable, not understanding who I am, it's not doing anything, like not changing my mindset. That was me in the cupboard, like a plant in the cupboard. Yeah, just weak, small, but I thought I was big. You know, boom, like cash. All these like false things, fake things. Boom, now, put me in the sunshine now. I even said that on the TC, I'll tell you now, after me plant, like finish my plant analogy. Boom. Anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, that was like, all the love, all the support, all the understanding, all the processing allowed me to grow emotionally and I feel like I finally grew into my because I take you back to childhood I don't know if I mentioned this before but because I take you back to childhood and you're probably in your childhood stuff like always talking about it like it almost regresses you to that state and you're slowly working through that and you're working up like you know like just say you get onto something that's like four like three four years old and you're like you know four five six seven ten eleven twelve da, 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 and you can kind of get up to where you are because then you get to about possibly emotionally like 16 17 18 and then you kind of like almost caught up even though you're older you've like almost caught up to where that's all done now it's what do i do now so i understand what i was doing why i was doing it the trapping of this to that. I might just have to drop an next single one on trapping and stuff. Actually, yeah. So, boom. And then it's like, what do I do now? But I'm going to get onto this one next. Uh, not, 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 not. I've got quite a few of these I need to get out of the way first, yeah? And then I'm going to go on to the next portion, which is the moving on to next. But So, anyway, you work up and then you get to about like 16, 17, 18, 19, whatever. And it's like, what do I do next? And then you start planning for your future, what I'm going to do next steps. So like me and two of my bridgings that were on there, they've done like same thing. I was a bit ahead of them. I finished first. We got there, one got there before me. One got there like, one got there a couple of weeks before me and one got there like a week or two after me. But we complete the TC first because we've got in, you know, in it. <laughs> I just take things serious me. When I, everyone, anyone knows me, just knows that if I'm like on some, I'm fully in. You know what I mean? Fully. Mad. Anyway. Um, and yeah, so you're looking at next steps. So they've looked at next steps and they are successful within their own thing. Like, not highly successful Bill Gates and all these ones there, but successful in just this working normal life that we're not accustomed to, that we don't really belong in really. Well, one of them kind of does, but the other one is like me. Like, 
Not really. You know, the ones there. Man's roadside out, out here, like. <coughs> but yeah, anyway. So there's no conflict resolution. I'm just going to bring it back around to this. Forget all the other stuff. Oh, no. I remember now. Plantings. The sun. Shining and making me grow. That's why I got into that. That bit's boxed. Boom. Let's get back to the other. Support. I must have been on the TC one time. But what I was doing, because I was on Next Steps things, I'm reaching out now to over, like wider. So I was reaching out to my community to death. Bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit. People that I kind of like know. I'm getting bare like, information from some like linking, like um, some man that are deep in this thing got beer knowledge. You know, the ones there. But I start reaching out a little bit more when I hear something else from someone else. And I start going out to them. I won't chill with them. The, these guys I'm linking with are man that are chill with. Road man, geez. They're doing their bits on road. M chop, they're mad. They was mad. Anyway. I'm reaching out to these other guys that I'd never really chat to. You know, the ones there. They're probably customers in another life or whatever. But they've got certain knowledge. So go check them out. What about the grief? What about control? The, 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 and garnering that knowledge. I'm bringing it back to these man. These men are kind of mocking it a little bit, but... I get, I'm getting stuff out of it. They're just trying to put them man down because they're not fully like open to whatever, but I am getting what I need from these guys that's helping me. And because I'm telling them I got it from that, them guys, they're like, what? Anyway, they're on a mad one. So, <clears throat> where was I? Oh, so that's saturated. I'm saturated. I'm all over. I'm all over the wing. Screws, clinical staff, the man them. The rest of the cons, I'm getting bits from everyone. Now I'm reaching out. So now I've caught up now. I'm good. But now I'm reaching out. I'm chatting to other clinical staff on other wings, other like screws, other man them. And I must have asked one one uh one girl, one uh, looks like a trainee. She doing like a, a master's in psychology and they have to put like f- working, they have to go somewhere and put hours in somewhere and she'd come there. Anyway, um I must have asked her to see if she knew anywhere where I could volunteer, I think. And she must have just come back with a little scrap piece of paper and like three or four things on it, three or four places. I think they were mostly national over being Sheffield specific because obviously I was down, I was in the West Midlands, in this prison in West Midlands. Dovegate, I was in Dovegate. And uh, I must have sound mental on the, <laughs> on the fucking Spotify's and everyone's there. Sorry for everyone listening, just hearing bare nasals. Gonna hear it again, sorry. <laughs> but on camera, so we can't have a drippy nose around here in the chatty. Um, and then she brought this piece of paper. Oh no, I don't see Jim come back and someone said, oh, such and such has left this, this, this fee and I've looked and I thought, what, what is it? Like, who? And I thought, oh, it's her. I forgot her name now. And it played in my mind a little bit. It must have been playing in my mind. I didn't really know. Like, no, someone says percolating. I just let things percolate. So like, when someone tells me something new or tells me something different, this and that, I'll, I'll take it in don't mean I'm going to change my view on something or uh, my knowledge base on something, but I keep it in and I might stumble across something later on or it might click into my stuff. Of my 100% thing, I might have to pull out 26 of my, like that, that them two there, them couple bits there and I'm inserting their bits into mine so I've like made my knowledge base bigger because some of the stuff they've said clicked. It's either clicked so I've seen it in like a book or on a program or something or speak to someone else. And uh, yes, I'm expanding my knowledge and updating it, whatever. Always keeping it constantly updated and not just staying fixed on something. Do you know what I mean? So I don't think that, that works. Um, it's constantly revising stuff. And uh, it must have been percolating in the mind. And I'm sat in a community meeting, 40 man, I've told you. I'm sat in a big room, chairs along the walls, 40 cons maximum, four or five staff, uh, prison staff, couple of clinical staff. And so I was talking, I'm thinking, I just felt different. Literally felt different. And it was the only way I can describe it is most of my life. Do you want a sunny summer's day? It's funny you're talking about this on this fucking day like this. But imagine walking in like a field, like a like a field, yeah? Not a field field, like a fucking farmer's field, like just the fields, you know, it's, it's a park, it's a park, call it a park, big, big park, and it's tree lined, so there's like, you can walk on the grass, which is fully blazing, blazing in the sun, or you can walk across the path, but it's tree lined, so it's shaded, and it's cooler, 
And it felt like I'd been walking all my life in that shaded, on that shaded path. But me feeling different now felt like I'd stepped over that shadowed line into the sun because I felt supported. The sun that I was getting, like the rays that I'm feeling, the feel good factor, the warmth that I'm surrounded by, it was the warmth. I realized that I felt supported. I went on a mad one then. I just started like, I was reaching out to everybody, utilizing everybody, like realizing what they know. Like, I'm like oh, boom, what about, da, 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 can you, da, da. and I asked them, if they said no, they said no, and I said, cool, they don't have to do anything for me. But if they said, yeah, I can X, Y, and Z, cool, thank you. Because people love to help. People love to help. Most people. So yeah, so let's get onto it and yeah, you felt even more support, support and support and support. The temperature's just, re- you know what I mean? It's getting hot in her. You know what I mean? Will you pass our port around there? And that's how I can like, liken it, which I never knew I was in the shade or in the dark until I felt supported, until I realised I was being supported. And that's what the feeling was. That's, that's how I can like say how I felt like that. I speak metaphorically. I'm sure you've clocked onto it by now. And anyway, um, good feeling, man. Good feeling. But yeah, conflict resolution. Nothing's getting conf- uh, res- resolved in my house. We've got arguments from 1952 that are just still there. Like, I'm just thinking, rah, like, there is no conflict resolution. We don't know how to. All it is, is we're there, you're chilling, everything's all right. Then something happens, kick right off. Everyone's going ballistic, this and that, stamping, slamming doors, slam, stamping upstairs, whatever. That the, the shouting, swearing, it's being disgusting towards each other, yeah? <clears throat> and then, like, I couldn't cook. I'd be left in the house. Just say it's me, it's me and mum. So like I said, I've learned almost like these behaviours from her. Mimicking her, and uh, I couldn't cook, so I want some food. So I'd have to like go down, like mom, have some food, and she'd be like, okay, and that was it. Just ignored it. So it's never got resolved. So I've got an, someone's got an issue. If you've got an issue, you need to turn your attention to the issue. You need to turn your attention to the issue and work on it. Say right. So what's going on? What is it? And then once that's issue, so just say it's the other person. Once they've explained their issue, then we have to look at like, what is our part? What can we do ourselves? Not just go, oh, well, I've got an issue with this, 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 and this, and you need to this and that. That don't work. So if I've got an issue with something, I'm like, this is the issue. This is my bit. And even if you can tell me, and this is what I'll, I'll do this different. And you can even tell me what I need to do different. Like, help give me more, like how I can. But then you've got to take your bit. What's your bit in this? Can you see what your bit is? Will you take your bit? Like, what do you think you should do? And also, you could possibly do this, this, that, and the other. And then support each other with it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so then, me, help the other person. Um, so it's basically just say, you're like, you're giving each other tasks. Do you know what I mean? So then me helping that person with their tasks, and that person helping me with my tasks, and then that's how you get closer to the point, and then that's, that thing's boxed off then. It's just done. And you've grown from it. And you just don't do that thing no more. It might pop up here and there, but not as much. But hopefully, you and the other person, well, should I say, hopefully the other person can point out and say, oh, I did that thing again. Even if no one's there, no one needs to know. They can say, oh, I did that thing again, you know. Because that's the honesty. Do you know what I mean? And that's the re- that's being real and being, like, using, like, no one knows fucking not about being real. <laughs> I mean, everything's just a facade. Everything's just for, everybody wants to just look perfect. Do you know what I mean? Everyone wants to be praised for nothing putting no work in, just wake up, oh, you're great, you're fantastic, like, well, no one is, because that's not human, like, no one's great and fantastic for everything, like, we've got flaws, but what we can do is support people, to support each other, should I say, to get better, give the feedback, they take it on board, people realise what their own part in it, it, there has to be accountability, there has to be a personal responsibility, like, taking responsibility for your own actions, not just constantly saying, you did this and you did that, do you know what I mean? It's I did this. It's using the I language, the power, that the, the the word of I. Like I did this. So this is the issue. But I did this. I did that. I can do this, and I can do that, and I will help you. And and I I would have helped. You know what I mean? Like it's just I always I. Not you. Not you did this. Not you did that. Not you should do this. So this was beginning to be my understanding of what 
conflict resolution looks like. So it's not even just like, I'm not even talking about, forget the, the uh, my bridging the Breville guy. That's different because we get into micro conflicts with friends, family, partners, work colleagues all the time. To be honest, I'm still brushing up on how to deal with work colleagues because there's been instances and it's like, well, what do you do? I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm new to this work thing. I'm going to get onto that. That'll be a segment as well. Like how Roadman Corp in, you know, it'll be corporate, like the corporate kind of world. And it's not corporate, but within organisations. So yeah, that's my understanding around conflict resolution, mainly, so accountability. I don't know if I spoke about that, but I will talk about accountability and being responsible for your own actions and using the language of I, I did this and I did that, not you this and you do, you did that. I'm going to keep this one short because the hair fever is just a mad one. I don't want to get this episode out for tomorrow. So yeah, please like, comment, share, subscribe, DQNQ underscore lifestyle, Instagram, it's been a pleasure as always. Thank you to everyone that watches. Thank you to everyone that listens, subscribers, uh, followers, listeners. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the support. It means a lot. Um, encourages me to do more. And there will be more. And there's going to be changes. Not changes, but there's going to be progression. But don't you worry. Everything's going to come soon. All right. Marcus, Deacon Q, that's the podcast. Yeah.